How well I remember the very first time I ever saw Michael Topping on stage. This was in 1965 in a pub called The Chepstow in Notting Hill Gate, which was where I lived at the time. The Chepstow was our local gay bar, and it featured a drag act once or twice a week. It wasn't long before I had become the pianist of choice at the Chepstow, and I would roll up there regularly to play for such luminaries of the 1960s drag scene as Gene Fredericks, Terry Gardner, Tommy Osborne, Katie and Lola. It wasn't very long before I was doing my own drag act, but because I played for myself and sang bits of opera now and then, I was rather different. In fact, I became quite popular. I remember turning up at the Chepstow one Sunday lunchtime to find that my services were not required. Apparently there was a new drag act appearing that day and this one played for himself. Well, I wasn't too happy about that. After all, this was my territory. And even less so when this Melitza person got on stage, sat down at the piano and went straight into an aria from the Barber of Seville and sang it much better than I could have done myself. I'm sure Michael will forgive me if I say that at that stage, apart from his singing, he didn't really have an act. But he had something better. He had enormous warmth and a wonderful and slightly outrageous sense of humour. In a couple of minutes, I went from being rather pissed off to becoming a fan. I went round backstage to meet him afterwards and found he was just as delightful in person as he was on stage. We became friends. A little further down the road, Michael and I decided to form a double act. We had so many interests in common, our sense of humour for one thing, our pianistic training, and of course, our devotion to all things operatic. The main stamping ground in those days for us was a little dive called the Escort Club in Pimlico, which I think may have been the very, very first licensed official gay club in London. Michael and I pretty much took this place over from the entertainment point of view. If we weren't featuring our double act, he would be doing his solo as Melitza, or I would be appearing as fabulous, clever Audrey. But it was our double act that was the most popular there, no question about that. We had put together a sketch called Holy Disorders, in which we appeared as two elderly nuns. We would open our act with the song Sisters, as sung by the Beverly Sisters. After a bit of saucy banter, I would give them Tom Lehrer's The Vatican Rag, Subsequently, Melitza would sing I Enjoy Being a Nun, a parody of I Enjoy Being a Girl. And then we would produce, scandalously, babies from under our habits and join together for our operatic speciality, Mira or Norma, during which, in the livelier moments, we would toss our babies back and forth to one another in time with the music. I should possibly say that at this stage, Melitza's baby was black. We were not very PC in those good old days, I'm afraid. Of course, the Escort was a licensed club, and naturally, Michael and I enjoyed a drink as much as the next queen. I remember one evening we felt that our nun act was not receiving quite the level of appreciation it merited. So, more than a little the worse for wear, I'm afraid, we decided to liven things up at the end by having a mock punch-up and ripping each other's habits to shreds. I, I find this simply amusing and ridiculous, but I think Michael found the notion of two elderly ladies of the cloth battling it out slightly erotic. After a few years, Michael and I moved off in different directions. I went on to become one half of Hinge and Bracket with Patrick Fife, who had been a friend almost as long as Michael had, while he himself teamed up first with Dave Lynn and then with Joe to form the highly successful Topping and Butch. But Michael and I kept in touch, and we did appear on stage on a few subsequent occasions. Uh, I was Auntie Evadne and he my naughty nephew Michael at the Camp Pink weekend in Skegness in 1991. In 92, he was ugly sister Ruby to my wicked stepmother in Cinderella at Borum Wood. And a bit later on, we both appeared in two of the Brighton Cares AIDS charity shows in Brighton. In one of these, uh, my sister Jennifer joined Michael and I on stage to perform Three Little Maids from Poole, a Gilbert and Sullivan parody, in which the three Japanese schoolgirls had become three ladies of the pavement. And I was pleased to see that Michael's ability to deliver a line hadn't diminished in the interim. 
uh, I'll quote here, we had one set of lines, me, I set a timer before I strip, Jennifer, I know a judge who enjoys the whip, and Michael, and I've got a minge with a microchip, three little maids from Poole, indeed. Dear Michael, but ever Melitza, how much I would have enjoyed being present on this occasion. But I hope a few of these reminiscences have brought back happy memories to you. Both Jennifer and I wish you a rapid and continuing recovery and a long and happy retirement. God, how ancient we all are. Where was I when that happened? All my love, Michael. And please let your old friend Audrey leave you with a few croaky notes. car just distracted me there. Fucking shite. There's only three stupid bloody things. Why can't I get into the wrong bloody order? I know, every time I just get in... Ugh! Fuck off! Oh, shit, sorry, I shouldn't... I've left a bit out. Oh, that's crap, sorry. Fuck sake. Oh, shit, sorry. Oh, fuck. Let me start. Enough bloody noise. <laughs> you join in the fucking noise. Okay. Okay. Cars are doing to me again. I'll just have to do that again, John. I have no fucking idea what I say after that. Wait. Wait. You know you do the very end bit. Is it, is it meant to go back to a deep voice again? Yes. The end, or is? Yeah, because that was what we did. All right, well done. And take five. Action. Mm -hmm.